أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يذكه قولي رب زدني إلما اللهم فقنا في الدين آمين The tafsir of Surah Noon uh, we gonna do Qalam and uh, some people they call it Noon also because here uh, Surah Qalam which we call it Surah Noon also why they call it noon because it start with huruf muqatta noon and you know how many surahs starts with huruf muqatta huruf muqatta is disjoint letters and we don't know the meaning of it right whatever the rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained that's the thing we know how rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to explain wahi used to come everybody knows about it right as we discussed previously there are two kind of uh, surahs makki and madani okay makki surahs before hijra okay and madani surah after hijra what it means like rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was there in mecca for 13 years 13 13 years and he was there in madina for 10 years total of revelation of the quran was 23 years it was not like you know tora injil zubur in one shot it wasn't revealed but you know in ramadan we have seen inna anzalnahu fi lailatul qadr wa ma adraka it says oh quran was revealed so i am saying 23 years are you confused about that no you shouldn't why that was the original copy which allah subhanahu wa taala has which is in lohe mahfuz got it everybody the allah subhanahu wa taala has original copy which is in lohe mahfuz and where else we have the copy now in the heart of the even the small kids they are memorizing it right so we have in the musaf this is the only book which is not changed from 1400 years no change not even change in the haraka you know fatha damha kasra no change at all this is the book and you know in the starting allah subhanahu wa taala says alif lam mim zalikal kitab la rayba fihi hudal lil muttaqin there is no doubt in this book in surah baqara it says here when we are talking about surah qalam or surah noon which was revealed in makka it's a makki surah okay and here allah subhanahu wa taala talks about pen and whenever something is swore you know qasmiya we call it swearing something it means what it has some respect uh, have you ever noticed wal as you know by the oath of the asr time wal fajr by the time of the fajr the same thing here noon wal qalam wa ma yasurun here the by the pen so it says the pen was the first thing which was created and it was written what's going to happen long ago so here in this sura there are few things we will discuss first and foremost qulub of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay the character how he was and aisha radhiyallahu anha says rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was like a quran his character was like a quran and um, next thing we going to see in this a story about a person who was you know very uh, bad aqla he was very rude he was very arrogant okay and the third thing we going to see is story of the garden and uh, how they want to grab the whole fruits and they don't want to give to miskeen and what happens next these are the three things we going to uh, understand in this sura and in the end ends with the, you know yunus al islam and yunus al islam also called zanun and that's the reason some of the scholars say is because of that that letter noon starts with the surah noon surah qalam so these are the four things we going to see in the surah bismillahir rahmanir rahim 
So every word, every word has the meaning. Like you know, bis me. B with the kasra means with. Ismi is name. Bismi, Bismillahi Allah, Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. Most merciful, always all merciful. So this is the word meaning. And this is the word meaning. And inshallah, I'll send you the whole uh, workbook uh, in PDF form. This is how the words will be described. So here, known is known. There is no translation for this. Vakal mil vama yasru. Va is by. Here it's not for the and. Va with the padha is for by. You know when we say when when you saw something by Allah, you say Wallahi Tallahi. That is the Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is soaring by bal kal by the kalam wama wa again the wa has come. You can see in the phone or iPad. Next time try to get at least mushaf or iPad so that you can see clearly in the phone what what I am talking about. And I I will send the whole uh, mushaf also so that you can. Open it the way I have it now. Here the same thing wa with fatha it says and ma what yes turun they write in lines. So every word has root word. What it is root word? Because the have you ever noticed when you take out fruit, you peel it and you eat the main thing. You don't eat the you know outside the you know when you take out banana, you peel it off and you eat the inside thing. You won't eat the outside thing, right? The same thing, the inside core, the main thing is the root words. So that root words, they keep on, you know, mixing with the other words and make the word. Like, you know, Rahman and Rahim, they have same root word, Rahami. But accordingly, the meaning changes. If you don't understand right now, don't stress yourself. Just listen. Just concentrate. Rabbi Zidni Ilma. Just keep concentrating. So here, by the pen and what they write, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing and saying, by the pen I swear what they write. Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. With the grace of your Lord, you are not insane. About whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Rasul Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are not majnoon, you are not insane. Why is it so? Because the people of Mecca, they were very bad to him. They will keep on torturing him, you know, saying bad things about it. What they used to say, he's kahin, like, kahin, like you know, uh, sahir, like a magician. He was sadiq and amin for so many years. At the age of 40, he got the wahi, revelation. Till that time, he was sadiq and amin. That time, they didn't send anything. When revelation come, they, they started saying this. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, with the grace of your Lord, you are not insane. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you know, sometimes somebody may say something to you. But your mom says, no, I know my daughter, she's so good. You know, that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I know Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not insane. You know, he's saying, he's guaranteeing that. You know, sometimes you have to sign the papers and say, no, I'll take um, guarantee that they are good. That's how it is. But inna laka ajran ghaira mamnoon. And you will definitely have a reward that will never end. Ajra ghaira mamnoon. Endless reward to whom? To Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What it means that you know endless reward Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is getting getting how it how it's getting endless reward. For example, during the Azam, huh? Yeah. Azan is going on, we are talking about Allahu Akbar, you know, we are talking about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, after the Azan, have you noticed the dua? Allahumma rabba hazihi dawati tamma, that dua. We are talking about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? And in the whole world, every time we are praising Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how? Saying durood. You can say small durood also. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad. We are sending salawat. We are sending blessing. 
सो हियर मेका पीपल दे आर यू नो ह्यूमिलिएटिंग बट अल्लाह सुबहान अल्लाह तला इज से नो ही इज हिज रिवॉर्ड इज एंडलेस वी आर ऑल्सो टॉकिंग अबाउट रसूल अल्लाह वी स्टार्ट अवर क्लास विथ सीरा After Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we are praising Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because His reward is endless. That's how it is. And in ayah number four, wa inna kala ala kulukin azim, and you are surely on an excellent standard of character. He is. He was the excellent character. He is not only doing you know salah. He is doing dua, but his character was so good. He was very nice. His nature was. Very tender, kind-hearted. He was very kind-hearted. You know, sometimes he used to give hoard of goods in charity. Can you believe it? And whenever he gets something in in his home, he will give in the charity. He will never keep for himself. Once, you know, Aisha Razia Lanha, she distributed meat and she said only one leg left. So he said, no, that is the thing. We will be answerable to it. What? Whatever we distributed, it's written with the Allah, you know. But what we think, oh, this is the thing I got it. He was such kind of person. How the Islam flourished, the way his character was. He was never rude to even for the non-Muslim, except one thing: on Aqida, he never compromised. He never compromised. He never said, okay, oneness of Allah. Okay, I'll believe in whatever you are doing with the other deities. That's the thing we're gonna see in this surah. You know what they planned because he is very tender nature. They thought, okay, we're gonna take our idols and we'll ask Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to keep the hand on the idols, and we are good. So we you allow us something, and we will allow something. You understand? They want to have that mutual thing. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala stop that. And you know, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, if you did so, I might have given you double punishment just for keeping the hand on the idols. He he didn't do that, but you know, just to show how important the oneness of Allah is. We all believe in one thing, that is oneness of Allah, monotheism, Islamic monotheism, that Allah is one. We don't say, okay, Allah is one. We believe in you know, uh, Jesus is the son of Allah, Sufrul. No, we believe in Jesus also. We say Isa al Islam is also there. The whole of you know Surah Maryam, Surah Maida, couple of places we see like uh, how the. Isa Al Islam has been mentioned in one of my semester. There was a you know assignment which says Isa Al Islam was most mentioned in the Quran compared to their book. And we were supposed to do the whole assignment on that. And Subhanallah, when we take out the points, so Allah Subhanallah Taala clearly says he was the son of Maryam Alislam, Ibn Maryam, Ibn Maryam. Have you noticed that? So if you have little bit knowledge also, you can tell them no, he is the son of Maryam Alislam. And what was the uh, thing with Maryam Alislam? Miraculous, born, no father. Right, everybody knows, right? How Isa Al Islam was born with no father. He was a miraculous child. And um, inshallah, now we'll continue with this. So Inna ka Allah, la Allah kulukin azim. His nature was very excellent. And here, fasai tub siruna wa yub sirun. So you will see and they will see. What does it mean? So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, I'm gonna see what you gonna do. Like people of Makkah, he's saying, okay, do whatever you want. I'm gonna see what you can do because he's protecting, you know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam every time. You know, many times he didn't even know what's going on. But he was they came and that time he came to know. Okay, for example, hypocrites. He didn't know about hypocrites. Who are hypocrites? Munafiqun, we we call it in Arabic. The the whole list was was revealed, but he didn't tell us. 
because there was a hikmah behind it. So here in ayah number 7, surely your Lord knows best who has strayed from his way and he will aware of those who are on the right path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah knows who is on the right path. Who is on the right path? The people of the Makkah who is believing in oneness of Allah. Talking about that. And here, فَلَا تُتِعُوا الْمُكَذِّبِينَ So do not obey those who reject the true faith. Mukazibin is from kazib. You know, when we say uh, liar. So do not, do not obey those who reject the true faith. Why is it so? In the next ayah, this is the core of the ayah. In ayah number 9, وَدُّوا لَوْ تُدْهِنُونَ فَيُدْهِنُونَ They wish that you become flexible in your faith. As I mentioned, they want, you know, some thing they want to sanction and they want their thing to be happen you know so that the idols they can keep it or something like that so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no you become flexible in your faith so that they should become flexible in their hostile attitude here Tudhi Unun is from Dahan Dahan is like you know oiling something you know when we want something from our parents what we we started pleasing them aren't we we started saying good things about them so Tudhi Noon is like oiling, like buttering something. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are trying to buttering you, but don't get into it. And you know, they want something from you and they want change in the aqidah, which is not possible. Totally it's rejected here. So, وَلَا تُطِعُ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَحِينٍ And do not obey anyone who swears much. First, Allah Ta'ala uh, talk about good akhlaq of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, the opposite things. There are many things which are bad here. So let's talk about Tutiul Kullu Halaf in Mahin. Halaf is from Halaf. When the person, Allah Subhanahu Taala talking about a person who swears a lot for everything, he says, Wallahi, Tallahi. Why people swear? Have you ever noticed? Because they want to prove themselves they are on truth. Actually, they are liars. Not always, not always. Sometimes they, they want to prove themselves they are really true. But habitually swearing. Yeah, here halaf is, you know, when you say this word also, it's hard, right? So that's the beauty of the Quran. Halafin maheen. And you know, who, who swears and that, that, that's how, you know, like uh, it's becoming their habit of swearing again and again. If you see this ayah number 10, we, we did till ayah number 10, right? In this, so you know already, maheen, it's from haun. Haun is like disgraced, disgracing someone. So to, about whom we are talking, name is not mentioned yet. Have you ever noticed in Quran, only the characteristics have, has been mentioned. Name is not mentioned. Hamazin Masham Namin. Who is it? They slander a lot. Talking about a person who is slandering and what it does and you know, talking about people, bad things. And on top of that, what he says, Mannaim li khairin muatadin asim. If somebody is doing good, they want to stop them. And they are very sinful and transgressive. So many bad things, you know. If you notice from ayah number 10, 11, 12 and 13. All the characters, bad characteristics. Utulim bada zalika zanim. Utul is harsh, very harsh, rude. You know, if you talk to somebody, have you ever noticed even their foreheads, you know, they changes. It's really, you, you could feel that. You, you, sometimes those kind of people, you don't even want to talk to them. That kind of, you know. And Khaira Mu'atadin, Utulim bada zalika zanim. Zanim is, you know, from zanama. It's zanim, I have to explain this word. Zanama is, you know, have you ever seen the goat? They have this flesh here or or um, that kind of thing, one person, it has that double chin. We are talking about that person. Name is not mentioned, only the characteristics, how he was. So he has that double chin. And then, uh, Ankana Za Malin Babanin. 
he has lot of children and also he has lot of wealth but you know the history of that person he was born without wedlock and that time and now also if you are born without wedlock you are not considered good because you won't get anything in the property you won't get the lineage name you won't because if you are if you get married and you have kids you have that respect but this person he wasn't so now uh, he was born that way and it says like uh, he was maybe 18 years old that time his father claimed that okay i am your father you know but he himself have lot of children and lot of wealth but his character is very bad he is very rude using bad language very harsh very transgressor and very arrogant why people get arrogant because they have lot of money or banin banin is like you know sons if they have daughter they, they don't think okay now daughter or son doesn't make any difference but here it's mentioned that way like you know he was so uh, like uh, about himself boastful you know sometimes have you noticed like some people even when they walk their walk also is very uh, kind of boastfulness so here do not obey such a person so here allah subhanahu wa taala says do not obey such person and on top of that iza tutla alayhi ayatuna qala asatiru lawalin whenever the verses of the quran has been uh, recited he says oh these are the fable tales you know it's not truth that's how he used to say so this is the thing and allah subhanahu wa taala says san samahu ala khurtum we will soon brand him on the snout and his nose was you know like a snout uh, like uh, have you ever noticed like uh, elephant how the snout will be that kind of so we have seen he has chin double chin snout and he was very proud of that and we have tested them as we had tested the owners now one topic is ended on aya number 16 about this person but another topic starts from here <laughs> so here another topic starts in this we have tested them as we have tested the owners of the garden when they had sworn a oath that they would pluck its fruits on the next morning the next story starts about the owner of the garden what yeah yeah, yeah. the story yeah yeah was very bad so this i have paid just for that particular person you know like i will tell this who are paying so there is a man behind this so walid bin mughira everybody knows both of them do not i mean everybody knows quran is true but they don't want to accept it why the quran when it was the last one why they did it to Khalid bin Mughir yeah. Khalid bin Walid yeah. like his son is so good later on so they know Quran is Quran is no one on earth knew except the mother so the Quran is coming and telling who is the father you know have you noticed still 
like you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not revealing the exact name because the person as she mentioned he knows himself like all the identity is mentioned this double chin nose arrogant lot of sons wealth everything people might have noticed okay this is the person you know so that time he did this thing and uh, he was like uh, his arrogance was totally shattered so the one thing we learn from this story is we shouldn't be arrogant here and the first thing what we learn from uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam khuluqin azim we have to be good character two things we learn now and the third thing the story of the garden inna balawna hum kama balawna ashabul janna here i'm not explaining the whole every word but in the end i'm going to explain at least four or five words so that we focus on the those words and learn it okay because we have lot of story behind this here the people of garden has been tested in ayah number 17 when they had sown a oath that they would pluck its fruits on the next morning here is a aqsamu li yasri munna musbihin so they were saying they like they were lot of brothers they were saying this is a different story from that story they are saying okay in the next morning we going to go to the um, our garden and pluck all the fruits and we are not going to leave anything on the trees actually their father was very nice he used to distribute even to the miskin keeping one for himself one for miskin and one for the relatives but they don't want to. they are thinking okay if we go early morning we can pluck the whole thing out and and did not make any exception by saying inshallah wala yastasnoon yastasnoon is like you know they didn't said inshallah in this okay this is the first thing and then they said uh, then their world around it a world calamity of from your lord while they were sleep you know fatafa alayha taifun something happened the whole thing you know demolished in ayah number 19 while they were sleeping and what happens now and next and thus on the next morning it was like a harvest field nothing is there and they were like you know what happened next morning so they called out each other as the morning broke saying set out early morning if you are going to pluck the fruits so they set out while they were whispering to each other now they started in the morning and they are whispering why they are whispering because they don't want anybody to know that they are secretly going if somebody knows they will come and ask for the fruits right they have lot of fruits in the garden and they are saying let no poor man enter into it upon you today they are saying nay no we we are not going to give any anything to the poor and in the earlier verse they rushed quickly while they were assuming themselves powerful to pluck the fruits and prevent the poor what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying they think that they can do this but they they won't be able to you know sometimes we plan something and we go to do that first of all they didn't say inshallah and second thing their intention was bad is it right that we are not giving to poor it's not and you know here the word sari mean has been used it means what you know plucking out everything not leaving a single fruit it means that arabic has vast meaning even the small word sometimes even the haraka you know with the haraka also the meaning changes you know dhamma fata kasra the meaning changes we going to discuss in the end inshallah so in the early hours they rushed quickly by they were assuming themselves powerful to pluck all the fruits and prevent the poor but when they saw it the place of ruin garden there they went the day before it was so good but now they see we have missed the way they are saying no this is not our garden maybe we missed the way they are saying no we have taken some wrong direction it can't be our garden you know the whole thing has been you know destroyed nothing is good so that then once they realize that the garden is the same but it has been destroyed they say no but we are deprived of the fruits one of them says no bal nahnu mahrumun we are you know deprived of this fruits said who has the best among them uh, you know in them one of the brother who was second elder brother he said you know what we did alam aqul lakum lawla tusbihun we might have done tasbih you know we did wrong one of the brother is 
my favorite lot of brothers maybe eight or ten the second one was the smart one he said no we didn't do the tasbih the other scholar says here tasbihun means not only tas- uh, tasbih saying inshallah they didn't say the inshallah so two opinions are there they said we pronounce the purity of our lord qalu subhana rabbana inna kunna zalimin the good thing what they are saying right now you know subhanallah proclaiming the uh, oneness of allah saying subhanallah allah is the one and rabbina inna ka inna kunna zalimin they are saying we are the wrong doers see quickly they are they realize their mistakes and they they are saying no we were wrong we did wrong what they did wrong their intention was bad and with the bad intention intention they started so that was the wrong thing but this is the good thing they realize it and what they then uh, did then at the beginning they started reproaching one another they are now they are saying blaming oh you did that you did that you know how we blame each other they are talking that way and then qalu ya wailana inna kunna taghin then they say no woe to us we were wrong we were very outrageous asa rabbuna now perhaps they are you know they are hoping from their rabb this is the good thing perhaps we hope that our lord will give us in exchange something better than this truly we turn to our lord did they realize they did tasbih they said inshallah we din said inshallah and they said we were wrong now on top of that say rabbana an yubdilana khairam minha maybe our lord will give something better than this you know soon they realize no even though garden is destroyed not doesn't matter maybe allah subhanahu wa taala asa is like you know perhaps you know and you know they are saying okay khair and khair everybody you know khair is that or minha inna ila rabbina perhaps raghibun and we turn our lord and they are saying we are wrong allah subhanahu wa taala we turn towards you it means like you know doing a safar we are saying whenever we do wrong this is the th- thing we learn from from this whenever we do do wrong we do wrong because we are insan insan is from nisyan nisyan means forgive uh, keep for, uh, forgetting things so first ask astaghfirullah it's easy to say astaghfirullah if still you feel bad about it do to nawafil still feel bad about it put some charity money in the masjid maybe 50 cent 1 dollar doesn't matter if you did something wrong like you may you might have hurt your parents or your siblings or your friends something i'm not talking about kabira sin i'm talking about the you know small sins okay for kabira sin there, there will be had you know you have to uh, do all those things it's a different story okay in this way the punishment comes and of, uh, of course the punishment of here after is even greater if they but realize allah subhanahu wa taala says now they realize if they don't the punishment in the here after will be more greater but they realize alhamdulillah surely for the god fearing they are the garden of bliss inna lil muttaqina for the muttaqin those who have taqwa those who fear allah because they fear allah they have taqwa we all fear allah so we have taqwa so in the rabbihim jannatin naim they have garden of bliss and whenever we talk about jannat garden we talk about you know river flowing every time i i was just thinking you know whenever i i was reading or you know whenever imam is reciting the verses of the quran in summer we realize that we want to sit near the water right we we feel that nice feeling we get so subhanallah in jannah we going to have that feeling inshallah so otherwise shall we make the obedient like the sinners you know we don't want to be like the sinners what has happened to you how do you judge ma lakum kaifa tahkumun how you will judge yeah, here generally we are talking about do you have a book in which you read here again back to the same thing about the meccan people people are saying okay how do you judge do you have book in which you read you know how you know the revelation comes and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam dictates and the sahaba they write it 
But this people, those who are not believing, they are not getting that. How come he is doing? So they are saying, do you have a book in which you read that for their which you choose? Or do you have oaths when bias remaining effect, effective up to the day of judgment that you will get what you decide? Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, whatever you think, whatever you decide, you will get it? Have you think that way? Or do they have associate gods who have guaranteed safety for them? Then let them bring their associate gods if they are true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, okay, you are having other deities, call them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging here. Okay, you call your other deities if they are truthful. On the day when the shin will be exposed, on the ayah number 80, ayah number 42, here the shin means the lower part of the, you know, feet, shin, exposed and they will be called upon a prostrate themselves, they will not be able to. This ayah you have to understand a little bit. 42 ayat, yawma yak yukshafu an saqin vayud auna ila sujud. Here exposing the uh, saq, shin, means, you know, Allah subhanahu ta'ala will come on the day of judgment. Everybody knows like uh, when we get Jannah inshallah, what is the uh, more ziyada on top of it? What is the more surprise that Allah will, will we will face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Literally we're going to see the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the most important thing. So here one scholar says literally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose the feet and the other says it is the baraka of sujood. When you do sujood, here it's not saying salah. If you see in the ayah number 42, sujood. Sujood means literally you have to do the sajda, then only they will able to see the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Why the sajda and that thing? You know, sajda makes you humble. We do sajda only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Yusuf, that was for the respect, but it's not anymore. But here talking about sajda, scholar says those who do sajda properly in this world for the sake of Allah, not for Ya. Okay, parents are saying do salah and you are quickly doing it just to show up. That is called Ya. You are not marked anything. You know, right? Everything is written here, right and left. Our um, angels are here. They are writing it. So if you are doing salah, just think I am doing for the sake of Allah. Even though my parents are reminding, that's a good thing about them. But I am doing for the Allah, for the sake of Allah. Whether you do two minutes, four minutes with small surah, doesn't matter. But you are doing for the sake of Allah. Doing budu for the sake of Allah. So that time you will be rewarded in this world and the hereafter. Because here sajda is mentioned. So you will be rewarded for your sajda. doctor you can suggest that also she is a practicing doctor she can she could give some practical tips also right yeah, doing such stuff yeah the entire body is on the floor mm-hmm. so this is the how will answer you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. anything you can ask during the such time mm-hmm. but they said you cannot use the one yeah, mm-hmm. but you know about you can so I was asking one of the teachers, um, they always say, oh, no, 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 it's a Quranic prayer, but you say, I Allah, no, and then say, oh, Allah, no, clearly is best, you know, yeah. forgiveness is most important thing. So, so, so you can do any prayer, but it has, it cannot be a Quranic prayer, Allah will answer the prayer. So here, ayah number 44, so leave me alone with those who reject this discourse. We will draw them on little by little towards help from the way they do not know. Why they are drawn towards help? Because first of all, they are not believing in Allah, they are mocking and they are not doing sajda in this world. And you know what, hadith comes, those who are not doing sajda in this world, that time their um, backs will be, you know, as if uh, like a horn of the cow. How it will be? Like you 
can't break it, right? There is, there will be no flexibility. Have you noticed in scientifically, if you see our backbone has that holes and you know how it's flexible? Allah made it uh, that way. So we have to do sujood in a nice manner. So those people in 44 ayat, they will reject little by little. So they will go to hellfire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I gave them respite indeed. My plan is firm. He says, my plan is firm. I gave respite. Have you noticed people are, you know, enjoying, they are doing boastful things, but still they are there because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving respite. One day they will be cached. If they are not cached here, you know, as soon as they die, how the things will be in the grave. They will have very bad experience there. Is it that you ask them for a fee due to which they are burdened with the depth? Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you are not asking any money. He is not asking. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he conveys the message, he is not asking any wage. Usually, even when we convey message of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are not asking for any wage. It's the wage is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what it says. Which they are burdened with depth or do they have knowledge of unseen? Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I'm in they do they have the you know knowledge of unseen cross questioning so that you know people should think about it Allah is asking do they have the uh, knowledge of unseen or they write it down no they don't so remain patient with your Lord's judgments first be look of me you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is um, consoling the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says okay don't worry whatever they say is just be patient with your Lord judgment and be not like the man of the fish as I men- mentioned kasahibi uh, hut hut is fish don't be like a man of the fish who is the man of the fish Yunus uh, he cried out while he was in anguish he was is nada wahua makzum like he was in a pain and he was crying you remember like he was in the belly of the fish and he, he cried and he, he asked for the forgiveness that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving an example to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, every time in the surah, there will be a back and forth. What? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be consoled with the bad time, whatever happened. You know, Yunus sallallahu alayhi wa is not there at the time of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everybody knows that, right? You understand what I mean? Here, Makkan period, all the Makkah people are there. They are, you know, harming Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa They are giving hard time. But in that reference, he is giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through wahi, giving example of Yunus al-Islam, that it happened with him also, but he didn't control his anger and he went off. What happened next? He was in the belly of the fish. So don't be like that. You do sabr, keep patience. That's what it means. And then, had not a favor from his Lord come to his help, he would have been cast in the wilderness in a reapproachable state. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if he didn't ask la ilaha illanta subhanaka, he won't come out. He will be there as it is. You know, when he started that reciting dua, an angel said, oh, somebody, you know, familiar voice we heard and they uh, removed the, you know, pain. They said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, yeah. There was so many darkness, darkness of the sea, darkness of the fish and darkness of the sadness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed all that. So Allah says, it's my favor on him, on Yunus al-Islam. Then his Lord chose him and made him one of the righteous. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciate about Yunus al-Islam says, I, I choose him because he was a righteous servant. Even though, you know, sometimes we are, we get very um, anguish and we get angry, upset, that's okay. But again, we have to say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please forgive me. And then indeed, the disbelievers seem to trip you with their glances and when they hear the reminders and say, he is a madman indeed. So Allah SWT again says, don't feel bad. Again, they will say you are a madman. To whom? Rasulullah Again, we are in the present now. 
again the reference of the Yunus al Islam again back to the Makkan period in Makkan period again Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم says don't be uh, sad they will say that you are a madman wa yaquluna innahu la majnoon you are not majnoon and in, it is nothing but a reminder for all the worlds wa ma huwa illa zikrun lil alamin this is a reminder for the whole world what the whole story of what we mention now just quickly in 5 minutes we wind up the things okay it's 12:51 now we start with huruf e muqattar sura qalam is also called sura noon and we have seen the characteristic of rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swearing and saying about the pen and pen was made 50000 years before we were born and our all our you know what's going to ha- happen in our taqdeer our fate everything is written pen has written everything what's going to happen in our future and this pen has so much importance don't throw pen here and there because it has so much importance and in one of the hadith it says whatever you write it the ink of the pen that will be measured in good deeds in the hereafter so don't think it's a easy thing even in you, whatever you type that also will be measured and here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's written in yasturun so what we learn to today's word wa with fatha will be for by for the swearing wa with fatha for swearing and wa with fatha will be for and a n d two words same word two two different meanings have you noticed that same word two different meanings i will write here same word wa with fatha it's for swearing when it is swearing wa wal as there it will be for by for swearing and in this also in this surah also. but in the same ayah have you noticed wal qalmi wa ma yasturu but again for wa with fatha it's for and okay these two words you have to remember and one more word al qalam al qalam is what then very hard for them and you know one more word we going to learn today anta anta means you you know you i i means ana okay it's not there in the surah but i am going to tell you ana no not ana 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 means i you know in yusuf al islam story he says ana yusuf okay i'll say ana afri you can say ana saira ana rukaya that's ana okay anta i say anta means you uh, anta rukaya so anta a uh, noon sarki ta anta it's you okay in this we learned about the pen and how the pen writes the whole thing and then we have seen the kulukan of the kuluk of the rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how good he was he was a good character person and the next thing we have seen about the person uh, um, khalid bin wadi walid's father like he he was very bad his akhlaq was was not good not good he was more swearing and he has lot of son and he was very arrogant and he has a, a long nose like a snout and uh, one more thing he has that nail like a uh, flesh of uh, like a coat or something you know double chin and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did mention the name remember that the next story we have seen about the people of garden and the people of garden their father was good he used to distribute to the even to the poor people he wasn't they were not ready to distribute to the poor people when it was a custom when they come to take the fruits in mm-hmm. the harvest time mm-hmm. all the neighbors will come and gather they get plenty this is why they plan to go before the sun rises because the purpose of the plan not to give single fruit to anybody because they, they will be sleeping when they go out and run away with the fruit and uh, in, in this story what we learn good thing about as soon as they realize it they say oh we didn't say inshallah and then say we were wrong doers 
and they started doing tasbih and they said no perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will good in the hereafter and then the mention about the jannatul na'im the blessing of the jannah and soon after the mention of the one who didn't do the sujood sajda has lot of importance we have to do sajda properly and one who, who didn't do the sajda they will be in the hellfire it doesn't mean like you know doing the prayer not no it's not so it has a detailed meaning just I was uh, going quickly it means that they were not at all doing the salah or they were not at all doing the what all the rituals of the Islam and then finally in the end we have seen uh, about Yunus al-Islam uh, how he was very anguished and he left the people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds I was the one who helped Yunus al-Islam don't be like him because he was angry and left and I helped him take out from the belly but in the end he says keep patience keep the sabr so we all have to keep the sabr and finally Allah subhanahu wa proclaim the name you know oneness of Allah subhanahu wa so don't worry even though they are saying innahu la majnoon don't worry you are not majnoon you are not a mad person majnoon is from mad person illa zikrun lil alameen but you will be a reminder for everyone he is right Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is a reminder for everyone we will end with just small durud Allahumma say Allahumma salli wa salli ala nabiyina muhammad so inshallah with this we end subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka nastaghfiruka natubli jazakallah khairan kaseera